Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I'm here with iZip's Peak Plus. It's a Bosch powered plus size hardtail electric mountain bike. It's super affordable and they've done a really good job putting together value price components and quality components to hit a uh, sub uh, $4,000 price tag, which is great to see with the Bosch CX Drive. For the detailed specs on the bike, to try it out for yourself, to see the current pricing, uh, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. There you'll find our contact info. You can email us, call us, reach out to us on Facebook, set up an appointment to come try it here in Ladysmith, or take advantage of our Try at Home program where you can try it anywhere on Vancouver Island or the Lower Mainland. As I mentioned, this is actually a great value. I'm really impressed with the choices that uh, Isaac made to get it to be such a good price point while still being an incredible bike. I was just uh, out doing uh, some test rides and realized my memory card is full on the camera so you missed all the fun I was having. It was a lot of fun so I'll try to do another test ride video for you when the memory card isn't full. In the meantime let me step you through some of the features of this bike. We have the Bosch CX mid-drive here and uh, you know they've really done a great job of the integration because uh, we actually have an aluminum bash guard on here which is great to see they've kind of uh, integrated it into the frame tipped it up a little bit to give you some uh, higher clearance and uh, i love the bosch cx drive it's bosch's most powerful uh, drive system it has the most amount of torque it responds very quickly as soon as you put pressure on the pedals you get the power that you need You'll see in my other video reviews uh, some of the details and the benefits of why I like the Bosch system. Definitely it's very reliable and very responsive. It's measuring your torque, that is how hard you're pedaling. Um, the speed of the bike uh, using a speed sensor here and your cadence, that is how quickly you're uh, spinning the uh, pedals, a thousand times per second. So it's basically reading your mind. And uh, while it does that, it then gives you the power that you need based on what you're putting in. So that means on a bike like this, you're safe on the trails if you're climbing a hill, steep hill, but you know at the top you've got a tight corner and a cliff on the other side. As Soon as you ease up on the pedaling when you get to the crest of that hill, the bike also eases up. So you're not going to end up going over the cliff. Whereas you might have that happen, say, with a rear hub uh, e-bike that doesn't have a really reliable torque sensor. So it's nice knowing you've got that responsiveness that you would need. The mid-drive also allows you to leverage your cassette. So you've got a nice 10 speed back here when you go up into your massive climbing gear, gear here that we've got. Um, that's having an impact on the motor. So that's going to allow you to climb virtually anything. It also helps keep the weight centered and balanced so that it rides like a regular bike and uh, you're able to do all the things you do with a regular mountain bike. So it's great to see in this price point to have that high-end Bosch CX have it protected by the aluminum bash guard here. Now the battery, they've gone with the Power Pack 400, and that's part of the, one of the choices they made in order to uh, get the price to that uh, price point. Now the great thing is it's a Bosch standard. So when Bosch came out with a 500 watt hour power pack this year, they made it backwards compatible. So you could buy 500 watt hour and throw it on here and uh, it would work. Uh, but the 400 is a good value point to get the uh, bike at the price that it is. And, uh, you know, it's great because they actually haven't put any stickers on the uh, battery here. So if you do throw a 500 on there, it's going to look great because it's going to blend right in with the bike. We have a charging port here, so with a nice uh, plug to protect it. And it's in there well, so it's not going to fall out when you're riding. So that allows you to charge the battery um, while it's on the bike. Or you can remove the battery with the uh, key and uh, charge it off of the bike. So the uh, just rounding out the Bosch system before I move on to the other features of the bike, they have gone with the uh, Purion display. So the Purion display is more compact, it's not removable, and you can't charge anything uh, with the USB port on it. The USB port is simply for service. The advantage though is that uh, it's not removable, so you don't have to worry about taking it off and it being stolen because you forgot to remove it. Um, and it's also a little bit more crash resistant, so that leaves the, the the center of your bars here um, if you wanted to put a phone or something like that GPS for navigation or if you're riding this as a mountain bike on the trails um, it's a little bit smaller more compact and better protected it's also a little bit less expensive for the manufacturer so again that's 
one of the considerations in getting this bike uh, a little bit lower. But you still have most of the features you'd have on the Intuvia display. Like I said, you can't charge a USB device. Um, but you do have the range calculator, which is great. And if I press and hold the minus key here, I can cycle through the rest of the display. You can see the level that I'm on. I can see my trip distance, and I can also see the total uh, odometer on the bike. You don't get your average speed um, trip time like you would with the Intuvia display, but you still get the range calculator, and the range is uh, dependent on the assistance that you're in. So you can see if I go down to Tour, it says I've got 46 kilometers. If I move it up, go down to Eco, uh, and that's just the minus button here, you can see I've got 90 kilometer range. If I move it up to the new EMTB mode, e-mountain bike mode, which is an awesome mode, basically rather than you having to manually choose between Tour, uh, Sport, and Turbo by using the plus and minus on here, um, there's Turbo, uh, the bike chooses for you. So it automatically, when you're on flat, it conserves battery by moving it to Tour. When you're climbing a hill and you need more power, or you anticipate a hill coming up and you need more power, it's going to move you up to Turbo. I'm loving that e-mountain bike mode and I'm using it quite a bit and it's nice to have that on this bike. So that's the uh, the Bosch system. The rest of the uh, features on the bike, we've got the uh, plus size tires. So these are Kenda Havoc. They are 27.5 by 2.8 inches and uh, that gives you loads of traction and stability. I love the plus size tires. There's really no downside on an e-bike. Yes, you have... Um, higher rolling resistance than you would get on say a 2.25 but you've got an e-bike to help you overcome that and the benefits of being able to get the tire pressure low down to 25 psi is the maximum uh, so you can actually uh, uh, go quite low on the uh, measurements here i'm just trying to check out what the minimum is but you could go quite low and uh, you know we've got these really nice alex rims md50s so very wide rims that allow you to put these wide tires and really get a lot of stability and control over your bike. We have a Sun Tour Air Fork. It's an XCR. Uh, it's a, uh, got the uh, through axle on the front here, which is great, nice and uh, rigid. And we've got 120 millimeters of travel. Um, we do have a lockout here as well. And because it's an Air Fork, we have a Schrader valve here so you can get a shock pump and adjust the air accordingly to your weight and the riding style. So it's a lot of threads on to get that off. There we go, there's our valve to adjust the uh, air setting. And so that's uh, a nice feature. It's actually, sure it's not a rock shock, um, it's a sun tour, but it's actually a decent fork. And again, that's uh, one of the ways that they've managed to uh, get the price a little bit more affordable. Um, another interesting choice here is these are Slate T4 hydraulic disc brakes. Now, you're probably expecting Shimano, Tektro, something like that. Um, maybe you haven't heard of uh, this brand before. Well, turns out this is actually Tektro's high-end race-oriented brakes. So this is actually, you know, a step up from the Tektro you would find. This is actually a four-piston uh, brake. So we've actually got two on each side, and that gives you loads of stopping power. It's a real surprise. It's something I didn't expect for a bike in this price point. Fantastic brakes. Really good uh, fork, um, nice wide tires. On the back here, they've got a 10 speed instead of an 11 speed. So that's you know partly how they were able to get the, uh, the price down a little bit. It's a Sunrace uh, uh, cog set, but it is a Shimano Dior. We do have the uh, Shadow Plus here. So we've got a bit of a clutch that you can turn on or off to uh, tighten up or loosen the uh, chain. And speaking of the uh, chain, we do have an integrated uh, slap guard here which is nice to uh, protect your uh, chainstay. So, you know, all the little things that you'd expect are here and uh, quality components um, for a really good price. We do have uh, brazons here that you could use for a rack. So if you wanted to use this as a commuter bike, you could uh, put a rack on there still, which is pretty cool. It has a nice angle, nice, really low step over. It's available in two sizes. This is the smaller of the two sizes, this is the medium. It's available in a large as well. And uh, both of them have a really nice uh, low step over here, which again, makes it really accessible. You know, so it makes it really good if you are doing commuting and you're wanting something with a low standover height for starting and stopping. And it also is great on trails if you're wanting to ride a little bit more aggressively um, and perhaps not worry as much about injuring yourself. We've got an iZip branded uh, saddle. I found it quite comfortable, um, but of course saddles are easy to change, as are the pedals. But 
I like the pedals. This is one of the few bikes that I've gotten that actually has pedals that I like that I wouldn't change. They're nice wide platform pedals with the removable pins. Again, you know, for the price, that's, that's impressive that they've uh, done that. Um, up here on the uh, other touch points, we've got the uh, locking grips. Um, so that's a nice feature. They're not going to pivot while you're uh, riding. You could change those out to something more ergo if you wanted to do that. We've got the uh, visual dis indicator of your gear system up here at the top as well. I talked about the uh, quality of the brakes. So overall, I'm really impressed uh, what iZip has done to get this bike to an affordable price point, but still using good quality components. And they work together well. It's a really fun bike to ride. So if you want to come and, and try it out yourself, uh, head on over to our website at citruscycles.ca. Okay, so this is actually my third ride test on the uh, iZip P Plus here. And uh, the first two times the uh, camera didn't work properly. Now, I'm not complaining because this is actually a great bike to ride. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. So uh, we'll start out on some pavement here as I make my way over towards the trails. And uh, really, you know, obviously it's a mountain bike. It's designed for trail riding, but it's a good commuter bike as well. You've got the uh, brazons that are necessary to add uh, rack and fenders, which is awesome. And with these nice wide 2.0 inch tires, you get a lot of traction. So if you're riding uh, in wet, slippery conditions, you get a lot more rubber on the road to keep you safe, help you maneuver and stop. Gives you a fair bit of comfort, especially this front suspension fork. So it's worth considering as a uh, commuter bike and then a bike that on the weekends or on the way home you want to hit some trails instead of taking the uh, regular road home, you could certainly do that. Nice smooth shifts. I'm really happy with the gear range. So theoretically this small size, uh, I guess it's a medium size, is too small for me. I'd be better off with the large size. And they do make the two sizes, which is nice. Both of them have a really low standover height, which is great. Again, both for trail riding, it's good because you're not going to be worried about you know, injuring yourself if you overdo it, um, get yourself into some trouble. But also as a commuter bike, if you're stopping and starting a lot, it's really easy to, to hop off. But anyways, I actually like the small size um, because it, it puts me a little bit more upright. And being more upright for a uh, commute is great because it helps you uh, focus on the traffic around you. You might want to add a uh, suspension seat post since this is a hardtail, but with these wide tires, it does definitely absorb a lot of the bumps. And I'm noticing, you know, this is great uh, riding on broken pavement and on the potholes. Works out really well. The front suspension is nice, and yeah, just throw some uh, a suspension seat post on the rear. You'll have a nice, comfortable bike. It's also really nice having the CX because it does give you lots of power and torque for hill climbing. Very responsive.
Yeah, and with an air fork up front like I have, it allows you to maintain your speed on broken pavement. Hopefully your commute isn't like this all the time. If it is, well, this is a great bike to have. Again, just add a suspension seat post. Um, when you have that air fork up front, it gives you the ability to continue straight rather than avoiding the potholes and at a consistent speed. And when you're in traffic, that's the best way to stay safe is being consistent. Beautiful day here on Vancouver Island in the fall. Beautiful time of year to be cycling. Now for this hill, I could pop it up to turbo if I wanted not to work as hard. On the e-mountain bike mode, um, if I give it a little bit more force on the pedals, then it really moves it up to the turbo for me. And I don't have to remember to put it back off of turbo. But if I didn't want to work at it at all, then just press the plus there to get it into turbo. Now I don't have a bell on this bike. If you were commuting, I'd recommend adding one so you can make pedestrians aware that you're coming. But when you coast, it's, you know, it's a mountain bike freewheel. You can definitely hear it, and that uh, tells people you're coming as well. Okay, I've got a massively steep hill coming up here before we get onto the trail. And uh, hopefully the GPS is working correctly in the video so you can see. I don't remember, I should write it down sometime. It definitely exceeds 20% and uh, you know I'll have no problem climbing it with the CX drive and uh, the 10 speed cassette on the back here it has a pretty wide gear ratio and I'm not even in my uh, easiest gear here and flying up at 15 kilometers an hour So really any steep hills are not going to be a problem on this bike. And I wasn't even in turbo. <laughs> now probably I was pedaling hard enough that it may have put me into e-mountain bike mode. Or into uh, turbo while I was in e-mountain bike mode. takes some getting used to having the uh, Purion display. Most of the bikes I ride have the Intuvia up front here. It is kind of nice having that space available if you wanted to put your phone or GPS or something there. But it does uh, somewhat limit what you can show on the display really. You've got your speed, one piece of data from your trip computer and your battery level. And you can cycle through the data on the trip computer pressing and holding the minus key here. Okay, we'll uh, do a bit of trail riding here. This isn't a uh, mountain bike trail per se, uh, so I'll have to keep my eye out for uh, pedestrians. So I'll be keeping my speed down. That's a fun little trail to test bikes on. And I really like having these uh, 2.8 plus size tires. They uh, are quite forgiving. You don't necessarily have to pick the right line on the trail.
I also really like the uh, four piston brakes up front here. Great for stopping. Lots of modulation on them. Hello. It's nice having the confidence that I'm not going to end up over the cliff there <laughs> when I've got some pretty decent brakes. for today. Coming up here we're going to get some really loose gravel by the hydro substation and again that's a good example of when the uh, wider tires come in handy. So this is actually very loose on a thin tire bike, even a mountain bike with a 2.25, so you're going to sink in a lot, you're going to have a hard time rolling the bike. These 2.8s, you just float right over it, not a problem. Got a big hill here again, it's uh, nice having the confidence in these brakes. You know, heart tails definitely help reduce, keep the price down. So this is a super affordable bike. I really, I can't believe the price on it or the quality of the components and it's so fun to ride. Heart tails are, you know, especially this one is really agile, really fun to just kind of throw it around. Lots you can do with it, really a lot of fun. So now I'm going to head back up the trail. Hopefully uh, sometimes in the trees here we don't get good GPS reception, so I'm not sure if it'll show the uh, grade on the hill or not. I'm hoping that it'll be accurate, but uh, occasionally it doesn't work that well. But it is a relatively steep hill and a long climb, and again, it's a good example of when this uh, Bosch CX really shines. One thing I do miss, and it's probably just me, uh, with not having the Tuvia display is I always put the clock on my trip computer on the display so I can make sure that if I've got an appointment back at the store that I can be back in time. Well, hopefully when you're out riding you don't have to worry about the time. But I do miss that because the Purion display doesn't actually have the time so I do it the old-fashioned way. Check my watch or of course you can mount your smartphone or GPS on the bars here and use it that way. You know, I find this is a fast bike. It's, uh, I suppose, you know, a little bit lighter than a full suspension might help as well. But, you know, I'm just flying up this hill almost 20 kilometers an hour. And, uh, you know, you get up to that 32 kilometers an hour pretty quickly on this bike. Now, of course, I'm pushing myself. You can hear me a bit out of breath. I wouldn't have to if I don't want to fly up the hill at 20 some kilometers an hour. Then, you know, I can just switch into an easier gear, put on turbo and take my time. But for those people that say that I'm cheating, I say, come and try it. <laughs> you know, do those hills, ride for an hour or two. You'll feel it, I mean, 
a lot of customers with injuries, that sort of thing, and it's a great way for them to get back and into the sport, into being active, without a lot of the risks that would otherwise be associated with it. All right, so this is the uh, Eyes at Peak Plus. Um, I believe it's the same as the Rally uh, Tokul. I'll have to double check. Uh, Isaac and Rally are owned by the same company, so they often have the same bike branded two different names and different colors. For all the details on it, to ask a question, come try it out. Head over to our website at citruscycles.ca.